So to study prehistory, we rely on archaeology, with scientists who study objects made by humans called artifacts. We also rely on anthropology, with scientists who also study artifacts, but who are more interested in the cultural aspects of societies. So if humans are willing to accept radiocarbon dating, the existence of dinosaurs, or even the simplistic Big Bang Theory, we can rewind with faith and speculate a few million years ago. Paleolithic era started six to seven million years ago. Humans likely descended from early forms of apes. First human-like creatures were called hominids, living in Africa, who could walk upright with opposable thumbs. Some common hominids are Australopithecus, around four million years ago, walking on two legs, small brain, using sticks and stones to dig or break open food. Homo habilis, two million years ago, or able man, was short and had a larger brain, lived in East Africa and was the first species to use stone tools. Homo erectus, one and a half million years ago, had longer arms and legs, looked more human. Around 500,000 years ago, learned how to make fire. This was huge in terms of protection, cooking, living in cold climates. Homo sapiens, 400,000 years ago, or wise man, made tools from stones, bones, developed farming and hunting techniques. They had large brains, small jaws, longer limbs, and looked closer to us today. There were two kinds of Homo sapiens, eventually becoming modern humans. Neanderthals lived around Europe, made clothes from animal skins, and buried their dead. They had larger brains, heavier bills, and were slower moving. Homo sapiens sapiens, they most likely killed off the Neanderthals as they took over their hunting and gathering areas and eventually their belongings. This most likely was the first genocide by humans. Race is a grouping of humans based on shared physical or social qualities into categories generally viewed as distinct by society. Species a group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals capable of exchanging genes or interbreeding. Sometimes science blurs these terms to define things, and sometimes societies blur these terms to create hierarchies. The Great Migration from Africa began when the Ice Age pushed humans towards warmer regions and connected the continents through land bridges as sea levels lowered. Humans walked until they reached almost every continent. The Ice Age ended about 10,000 BCE. Paleolithic people painted using animal fats and mineral ores to create colors. Most hand-drawn cave paintings show animals during a hunt. Neolithic Era After the Great Migration, humans began to farm and settle rather than roam as nomads. This was the start of the agricultural revolution. Humans were able to keep animals and grow food in one place, with recurring harvests every year. Staple foods such as rice, corn, beans, yams, and grains were harvested. Living near water provided nutrition, irrigation, and other food sources like fish. Canals were built to bring water to land. 
plants were domesticated by replanting seeds from the best plants, ensuring a better round of crops. Animals like sheep, goats, and pigs were domesticated for meat, milk, and wool. The dog was one of the first animals domesticated to help with hunting and security. The first civilizations were the first to create systems of writing, economic trade, and governments. Between the Mediterranean Sea and Persian Gulf, Mesopotamia is where Sumeria, Assyria, Akkadia, and Babylon were formed. Cuneiform was created, a form of writing by making impressions on clay tablets. It was used to keep records of food harvested or goods to be traded, which was very important. These were patriarchal societies. Writing stories was very important to remember culture and traditions. Math, science, and astronomy were also developed and recorded. Money is a form of account or exchange is starting to be used where be it shekels, tokens, or tally marks on bone or clay tablets. Minting coins with various metals came into practice in various parts of the world to represent commodities or barter. These units of value would eventually become the most trusted form of communication within cultures throughout the world. In ancient Africa, Egypt was born near the Nile River and ruled by dynasties of pharaohs over 3,000 years. Masters of math and art, the Egyptians used hieroglyphics and papyrus to record and communicate. And today, the great pyramids and statues still stand today from that time. Israelites lived south of Phoenicia. Historians used their sacred text, the Torah, for historical references. Their leader was Abraham, who taught monotheism. He was given a divine command to leave Mesopotamia towards modern-day Israel, and then Egypt, where they were enslaved, then freed by Moses. India separated from the rest of Asia by the highest mountain range in the world, the Himalayas. Sanskrit writing was created, and so was social structure, with a caste system you were born into for life, with a top-down hierarchy of nobles, merchants, farmers, and untouchables. Hinduism and Buddhism originated in India, and it was ruled by the Maurya Empire and Gupta dynasty. China had several family dynasties with the Shang, Zhu, Han dynasties that handed down rules through the generations, considered the elite aristocracy. The Great Wall of China was built, and the Silk Road was a trade route that connected China to Europe, Middle East, and North Africa. The rulers of ancient China believed they were destined to rule by a mandate from heaven. Ancient Greece was a cluster of islands and peninsulas. They were traders and farmers, led by aristocrats and the military. They created government and democracy. The Greeks worshipped a family of gods and goddesses from their mythology. The Olympic Games were created as a festival of athletes to honor the gods. Ancient Rome was created as a republic. Only the wealthy could sit in the Senate, and laws were enforced by elected officials. They conquered North Africa, Greece, Spain, France amidst their own civil war. Julius Caesar tried to unite and rule, but was eventually killed by the senators. Romans were amazing builders and tried to build elaborate temples, basilicas, arches, and statues. The Middle Ages As the Eastern Roman Empire started to fall, Islam rose in the Arabian Peninsula, led by the Prophet Muhammad. The holy book, the Quran, contained rules of the religion. Five pillars of Islam, faith, prayer, charity, fasting, and a pilgrimage to Mecca. The Mayans were the first great civilization of the Americas. They successfully grew crops from beans, papayas, avocados, corn. They built large temple pyramids in Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Mexico, 
and they held festivals and had human sacrifices for the gods. The Aztecs conquered lands from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean. They worshipped a sun god and believed human sacrifice yielded good crop. The Incas settled in a village called Cusco in Peru. They created an empire that stretched from one end of South America to the other with about 12 million people. They were known for their mountaintop buildings created with only stone, hammers, and bronze chisels. Machu Picchu is their most famous Incan estate, about 8,000 feet above sea level. Both the Aztecs and Incas were eventually conquered by the Spanish conquistadors in the 1500s. Medieval India was ruled by Mongols until they won Delhi back using cannons and marked the beginning of the Mughal Empire. Akbar was considered the greatest leader of the empire, letting art and scholars to flourish and let religion to be practiced freely. After him came Shah Jahan, who built the Taj Mahal for his wife, and Aurangzeb, who spent the empire's money on war, until it weakened and splintered. Eventually, the British conquered India in 1857. China's Middle Age was led under the harsh Sui dynasty at first. The Tang dynasty ruled for about 300 years with a prosperous reign with Confucius teachings. The Song dynasty was next and it flourished with a merit-based government, food surpluses, and more art and literature. Japan was formed by four islands in the Pacific Ocean. This period was led by emperors and aristocrats. Buddhism was a fixture in society. Nobles hired armies made up of samurai warriors, following a strict code called Bushido, where honor was more important than life. Shogun military dynasties ruled for about a century. Paper, porcelain, and iron markets grew. European Middle Ages was a time of kings, queens, knights, and nobles. But it was a hard time for peasants and farmers and a struggle between church and state. The feudal system of kings, nobles, vassals, knights, serfs was built around warfare. About 25 million or a third of Europe's population died from the bubonic plague, carried by rats. Renaissance and Reformation. The Renaissance, meaning rebirth, started a time of cultural change that paid homage to Greek and Roman culture. It emphasized secularism and the individual, rather than religion. Well-known literature from this time was penned by Francesco Petrarch and William Shakespeare. Major artists were Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Donatello. The Reformation was a time when the Protestant church was formed to break away from the Catholic church. Ordinary folks were trying to figure out how to get into heaven, and corruption during this time caused this departure. The Age of Exploration Europeans eventually set sail around the world and started new trade systems. They settled and spread their religion. They joined the African slave trade and conquered North and South America. Rulers across Europe sought fame, power, and glory, and they achieved it. Revolution and Enlightenment Revolutions meant new governments, economics, and society. New concepts in science and thoughts were developed over 300 years. The Earth was no longer considered the center of the universe, but this was controversial and contradicted the Church who sent Galileo to jail for this thought, along with other scientists. Isaac Newton presented a set of universal laws that explained motion and gravity. William Harvey discovered and shared that the human heart pumps blood throughout the body. Monarchies rose as a form of government across Europe, from England to Spain to France to Austria and Russia. They sometimes improved their nation's conditions while some took advantage of their people and caused revolts. In France, a revolution in the late 1700s was brewing as they wanted to replace their monarchy with a democracy. 
A national army hero, Napoleon expanded France's empire across Europe, but went too far by invading Russia. All citizens were equal, but its ruler had absolute power. Eventually, Napoleon was exiled. South America fought for independence from the Spanish in the 1800s under Simon Bolivar and Jose de San Martin, freeing Venezuela, Argentina, Chile, Peru, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and Colombia. In America in the 1700s, the Americans declared independence from the British. The Constitution was written, and with it came amendments for free speech, freedom of press and religion, trial by jury, the right to bear arms, protection of property rights, and more. The American Civil War was waged between the North, which had manufacturing and smaller farms, versus the South, which had plantations of cotton and tobacco. Both wanted the best farmland. The Northern states under the Union wanted abolitionism, but the Southern Confederate states wanted to keep slavery. By the 1850s, over 3 million African Americans were enslaved in the South. The Northern Union states won the war in 1865 and wiped out the rebels' resources and morale. The Industrial Revolution began in the 1700s with new farming practices and factories which led to greater food production and larger populations. People used iron for building machines and coal to run them. Some key inventions were interchangeable parts for mass production, plus the telegraph, the locomotive, steam power for boats and trains. New agricultural tools were created like plows and reapers, plus the cotton gin. The second stage of the Industrial Revolution from the 1800s to World War I was when steel became mass-produced. Some major inventions include the telegraph, the typewriter, the telephone, the light bulb, the airplane, and the car. Imperialism. The era of imperialism was a time of great competition among nations around the world and caused a great amount of damage. European countries competed to claim lands for resources to dominate markets and to sell their own goods. Many countries fell under imperial rule in the 19th and 20th centuries and changed many cultures. The British set up a monopoly trade in India and eventually in China as well. European nations met and agreed to partition African countries to help organize their settlements and work conditions. A few wars were fought, primarily over diamonds and gold. Japan modernized itself by building transportation, factories, banking systems, communication systems, and updated their military. They took control of Taiwan and parts of China. They also defeated Russia in a war and was then seen as a major power. The USA went to war with Spain in 1898 and defeated their navy and gained control of the Philippines. They also gained control of Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Guam. America was starting its empire. World Conflicts The 20th century had two world wars and was full of violence. World War I was triggered by a volatile European arms race, alliances between countries, imperialism overseas, and nationalism within countries. The pinpointed assassination of an Austria-Hungary Archduke and his wife by a Serbian nationalist was the final trigger to start the war. About 37 million people were killed in the war. Plus, the Spanish flu broke out in 1918, killing more people than the entire war. The Great War left many countries broke, with slow economies, low wages with markets crashed. Severe unemployment followed, along with the Great Depression. This led to extreme governments with propaganda. Russia turned into a socialist state. Japan expanded its totalitarian territory in Asia. Fascism rose in Italy. And Nazism flourished in Germany with Hitler. When the Germans invaded Poland, this triggered World War II, and Germany commenced its expansion across Europe. The allies of Britain, France, Russia, and the USA were able to defeat the Axis powers of Germany, Italy, and Japan in 1945. 
The USA dropped atomic bombs on Japan to officially end the war. Post World War II, NATO formed with the USA and Western countries, while the Warsaw Pact formed with Russia and much of Eastern Europe. The United Nations formed as well, uniting all countries. The UN recommended Israel to be created by partitioning British controlled Palestine in 1948. Post World War II the USA and Russia had an ideological cold war for decades. Berlin, Germany was split amongst the US, UK, France, and Russia, eventually unifying after decades. Communism thrived in China and in North Korea and North Vietnam. This also led to arms races for decades, including nuclear weapons. In parallel during these times, India gained independence from British rule in 1947 with a massive non-violent resistance led by Gandhi. India was soon partitioned into two countries. Allied forces occupied Japan and helped it rebuild. And after decades, Japan became a powerful manufacturer in trade, auto and electronics. About 50 African countries became independent as well, with a mix of capitalist and socialist ideologies. After being imprisoned for 27 years, Nelson Mandela became the first president of South Africa. The last 50 years has seen the most dramatic advancements in technology, with computers, the internet, smartphones, GPS applications, and space travel but they are fairly weak in comparison to past revolutionary inventions of the automobile, aircraft, transistors, refrigerators, harnessing electricity, batteries, steel, and concrete, just to name a few. So if we look back at human history as far as we know it, we can see patterns of hierarchies through all the civilizations. The monarchs, the armies, the merchants, farmers, and slaves. This is how humans have always separated themselves, along with race and money accumulated. Humanity's greatest weakness is greed and lust, while their greatest strength is communication and compassion. These four characteristics have decided how humanity has evolved over millions of years. So if we erased all of history and started again, there is a great chance humanity would repeat everything again because of these characteristics, especially during times of anarchy and plague. And while the majority of humans may be smarter now than at any point in history, we also may be less capable of surviving than before. So let's have faith that our children and future generations will correct this.